Hello, my name is Kishwani. This K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on the very top of page 297. The very first problem on page 297, problem number 5, and today is our lesson number 187. But before you continue watching this video, I want to make sure that you have watched. This video deals with what is known as a box and whisker plot. Box and whisker plot is something that I already covered. This topic we already discussed it on day number 181. On day 181, we did the problem that you will find on page number 273. If we turn to page number 273 very quickly, you will see that on that page there are two problems that deal with this concept of box and whisker. And I did the one on the top, problem number two point, problem number 4.2.6. If you have not watched this video 181, go back and watch that one first so that this is easier for you to swallow. Okay? Okay, so here's what it is. What we are given here is what is known, as I said, box and whisker plot, and I have, re I have reproduced the uh, plot on the, on, the, on, the, on the blackboard so that we can discuss it. What does this uh, box and whisker plot gives you? It gives you several bits of information about your data set. You can, by looking at it, you can tell where it begins, you can tell where it ends. So it gives you the minimum and the maximum of the, of the, of the observations, which means from those two things we can figure out the range. That's the first thing we do. From the minimum and maximum we know the range of the data. Then it divides the data up into quartiles. And again, if you don't know what quartiles are, if you don't understand this terminology, that means you have not been watching the videos in sequence. Go, them, go in sequence, don't skip around. We'll look at all the data analysis questions in the sequence. Quartile is where we divide the entire data set into four parts, four quartiles. For example here, for example here, the story begins at 105. The line begins at 105. 105 is our minimum. That is the minimum of all the observation. The lowest observation is 105. It ends all the way up there at 146. That's your maximum. Maximum of the observation is 146. Since we know the minimum and the maximum, since we know the minimum and the maximum, we can find out the range, which happens to be the very first thing that they ask for. So let's find out. One looks like a range is range is is it 31 or is it 41? It's 41. So that's your range, right here. Then the story continues, this very first line that you see there, that is what is known as the first quartile. The first quartile is the break, uh, is, the, is, the, is the point where you, you break the data into the bottom 25 percentile, bottom 25 percent and the top 75 percent. The first quartile is same as the 25 25th percentile, which means that's the observation below which 25 percent of the observation lie and above which 75 percent of the observation lie. Let's continue. And then it ends, the box ends at this part, which is your third quartile. A third quartile is where, a third quartile is where, up is a point where 75% of all the observations are going to lie below it and 25% of the observations are going to lie above it. That is called the third quartile, right here. Third quartile, P with subscript 75, that means 75 percentile, and that happens to be 126 here. The beginning of the, beginning, this Q1, the first quartile, is the marker where the first quartile ends and the second quartile begins. From that marker, from Q1, it is called Q1. Even though we're dividing the population into four equal parts, into four quartiles, but then in calculation, we only calculate three numbers, three figures. First quartile, second quartile, third quartile. Listen carefully. The first quartile, the Q1, is the end of the first quartile and the beginning of the second quartile. The Q2, which is right here, which we'll come to in a second, which marks the end of the second quartile and the beginning of the third quartile, which means this marker here, Q2, divides the population to half. Half the population lies below it, half the population lies above it. Let's make a note here. Q2, Q2 right here, is your 50th percentile. Half the, half the observations lie above it, half the observations lie below it. Half the observations lie 
above it and half lie below it. Well, that is the definition of what do we call that uh, observation below which half the observation lie and above which half the observation lie. That middle point where that sits right in the middle, half the observation are to the left of it, half the observation are to the right of it, that's median. That is the definition of median. So this guy is your median. Right here. And from here, from the beginning of the Q, from, from beginning of this marker, the first quartile to the third quartile, from this here, here to here, we have another range, as opposed to this range, which is the range of the entire population, this range is called the interquartile range. I think that's the th next thing they ask for. What is the range? What are the three quartiles? Well, here are the three quartiles, right here. The first quartile, first quartile, right here, if you look at the plot, it looks to me like 114. The second quartile, which is the median, is 118. The third quartile, which is the 75th percentile, is 126. So let's read the question one more time, make sure we don't miss anything. What are, what, what are the range? Well, we found the range. The range is 41. What are the three quartiles? The three quartiles are right here. The Q1, the first quartile is 114, the second quartile is 118, the third quartile is 126. Then they ask you what is the interquartile, interquartile range? Well, interquartile range is, this is how we write it, interquartile range, interquartile range is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. Right here, different between these two guys. 126 minus 114, 124 minus 114 would have been 10, so it looks like it's about 12. Well, it's not about 12, it is 12. That's it. So we're done with the part A. Let's answer the part B. In part B says, if the 80th percentile of the measurement, have the book in front of you, read the problem with me. If the 80th percentile of the measurement is 130 grams, milligrams, how many measurements are between 126 milligram and 130 milligram? Looks like a very complicated question here. Should I erase any of this thing or should I just let's erase all of this thing? Otherwise it gets to be too crowded. I give you a chance to absorb everything, which also gives me a chance to take my sip. Alright, we are told that 80th percentile is 130 milligram. This is how we write it. 80th percentile is 130 milligram. And we also know that our median, right, it's right here, 118 is our median. So, which is 50th percentile. Oh, sorry, we need the third quartile. We don't need the median, we need the third quartile. Right here. The third quartile, which is the 75th percentile, which is the third quartile, which is 126 milligram. Since this represents, since this represents, the third quartile represents the marker below which 75% of the population lies, and this is the 80th percentile, that means between these two, between 130 and 126, so this is 126, Oh, 130 is right here actually, we can talk about it. 130 is right here, and that it happens, which, which we are told is 80th percentile. This guy right here is 75th percentile, 126 is 75th percentile. So we are interested in this part right here, we are interested from here to here. The question is, how many observations lie between the measurement of 126 and 130? They measured the weight of 800 insects. The question is, how many insects weigh between 126 and 130 milligram. Well, this this is the 80th percentile which they tell you, they tell us that the 80th percentile, the 80th percentile of the measurement is 130 milligram. They tell us that, and this part came from the graph right here. This marker here is the, is the third quartile. This part was not given to us. This part is something that we have to get from the graph, which is the 75th percentile. The third quartile is right here. If this is the 75th percentile and this is the 80th percentile. 
That means this must represent 5% of the observation. From here to here lie 5% of the observation in this range. From 126 to 136, from 126 milligram to 130 milligram, 5% of the observations lie. How many observations are there altogether? There are 800 observations. So basically what they are asking you is what is 5% of 800? 5% of 800, we know that 10% of 800 is 80. 10% of 800, you just top out the zero. 10% of 800 is 80, therefore 5% is going to be 40. That's it. 40 observations lie. 40 observations lie between 126 and 130. Out of 800 insects that, that they weighed, 40 of them happen to weigh between 126 milligram and 130 milligram. And that's all. That's it. That was the end of that problem. I will see you tomorrow where we'll continue our journey. On, on to problem number six. Alright? Bye now.